right, if S is a closed surface, what do we mean by a closed surface? That means this is a surface which is the boundary of a solid three-dimensional um, region, usually called capital E, then the outward orientation the outward orientation is con is the conventional orientation yeah we usually go with an outward orientation then so let's as an example actually go back to the example we were just looking at so just a moment ago we had this orientation of a sphere and we had this orientation of the sphere so let's actually name these I'd like to name this first one n sub 1 and let's just clarify that this is of u comma v so we'll just get rid of the name n of u comma v and then for the second one here sorry for kind of running out of room well, let's call this one n sub 2 of u comma v right so what we have is n sub 2 is just negative of n sub 1 and both of these are orientations. Now, what we'll do is let's go ahead and compute n sub 1 of pi comma 0. So if the u coordinate is pi, if we go back and recall, um, the u coordinate was the phi value. And the phi value is the angle off the positive z axis. So if we, yeah, if we do this, um, if the, the phi coordinate is really pi, then we're actually talking about here the south pole. Now, we can go ahead and compute. Yeah, plug in pi and 0 in for u and for v everywhere you have this here. And what you'll end up with is you'll get the vector 0, 0, negative 1. Now, we need to draw. Okay, we should draw. Here's the sphere okay, of radius 7. And if we go to where the south pole is and we draw that vector 0 0 negative 1 that vector here um, this vector here points downward yeah ne 0 0 negative 1 and well okay that means that this n1 orientation is so this arrow is drawn starting from the point at the south pole out away from the center of the sphere so actually n1 is outward and then N2, which would point in the opposite direction, N2 in this example would be inward. N2 would be the inward in orientation. Um, here's the thing. Do not, do not associate uh, plus minus with outward versus inward. Um, you, you can't do that, uh, that you have to draw a picture, right? So the, the reason why not is it's not correct to just say that, oh, the plus is outward. That's just not true because what if we had an arbitrary decision actually way a long time ago, instead of u being the phi coordinate, what if u were the theta coordinate and v were the phi coordinate? If you did that, when you do your cross product, you just end up with the vector in, in the opposite direction anyway. Yeah, So you can't automatically associate the plus with the outward orientation with this little switch. Um, the plus would have been the inward orientation. So you have to draw a picture. Draw a picture like we just did spot check in one location to see what's going on with the uh, orientation to see which one you want. Um, let's also just comment that if S is uh, if if S is given by the graph of a function, okay, this should always be orientable. Um, so we saw in this case uh, we could you know compute that r sub x times r sub y. Uh, let me just say so this this should end up being and you can work this out it'll be par negative partial derivative of g with respect to x negative partial derivative of g with respect to y comma one we actually did see this before so um, based on 
how this uh, cross product of the tangent vectors looks, we can say that the normal uh, or the orientation is, well, plus or minus, depending on which way you need it, of uh, negative partial derivative of g with respect to x, comma negative partial derivative of g with respect to y, comma 1, over the magnitude of this vector. So magnitude of negative partial derivative of g with respect to x, negative partial derivative of g with respect to y, comma 1. Of course, we can go ahead and compute this out on, in the denominator. So we'll have negative uh, partial derivative of g with respect to x, negative partial derivative of g with respect to y, comma 1, and then the denominator. Uh, oh yeah, we're going to end up squaring, so that'll get rid of minus signs here. Partial derivative of g with respect to x squared, partial derivative of g with respect to y squared, plus 1 squared is just 1. Okay, the whole point of having an inside as well as an outside, or um, if you don't have a closed surface, um, or at least just two really distinct sides, not like the Mobius strip, which technically only has one side, okay? But in order, but ha at least having two sides, so like a side A and a side B, and a side B. The purpose of this is to talk about. Uh, the flux of a vector field F. So I've just set up this video so that it appears that I'm standing in front of this water tank. Um, but let's say that this three-dimensional tank with, you can see these kind of jet streams with the light uh, reflecting through. Uh, let's say that I could stand inside the tank of water and I had this cheesecloth, this orientable surface, and I just kind of attach it. Like you see these like, um, you know, these little circle things I think are just little pegs. What if I could just glue the four corners of this um, into there and just, you know, and then make, you know, of course this thing would move around due to the current of the water, but let's just say we could keep this stiff and it has its holes in here. And we just want to quantify how much water goes through from one side to the other, from side A to side B. Well, that's what this flux is trying to compute. So you have a vector field uh, F, and let's say that this is the uh, water current. Yeah, this is just uh, at each x, y, z, there's water uh, going in a certain direction of a certain magnitude, and you have this orientable surface. Let's just start with the cheesecloth here, right? So this is the, the surface is orientable. Example, like this drawing, it just looks like a patch of, you know, like a little towel, right? So this cheesecloth here. And what we're trying to do is, you know, at each point, like this point right there, you know, the there's this orientation. We've got this unit vector right here called lowercase n, and we're asking how much water goes through this point. That is, um, you've got this vector field, maybe we draw the vector field, you know, a bunch of different arrows. Sometimes the arrows are this way and that way, you know, like everywhere in three-dimensional space, there's an arrow. And so at this point, you know, if the water comes through like this, and that's your, your f vector there, how much water is coming through going from the bottom of this sheet up? Um, and then that, well, this should be f vector dotted with n vector. Of course, the amount of water going up could be negative if water is actually spilling down the other direction. So we don't just want to know how much um, water is coming up from the bot from side, let's say side A is the bottom of this. Uh, let me switch scenes again here. Let's say that uh, with this sheet here that side A is, is this side and then side B is, is up here. Yeah, side B is down here. And so we could um, be, we don't want to just know only what happens at this point, but at this, at, at, at yeah, let's not draw arrows, that's going to get, but at this point on the surface, and at this point, at every point on the surface, 
Um, and so how do we end up computing what happens at many, many separate points is we set up an integral. So um, here's a new definition. So if f is a three-dimensional vector field and n is an orientation of the surface S, then the flux, that's the new word, and we kind of previewed it earlier, but now we're f formally defining it, the flux. And to be more careful, it's part of defined as part of a longer phrase. The flux of the vector field F across the surface S, so that's the longer phrase, okay, is, uh, here it is, it's the double integral over S of F dot D S arrow here now, okay, and this is the double integral of F dotted with, this is how we end up implementing this, this is F dotted with the vector n oh, over the surface s, d s with no arrow. Okay, so there's a lot uh, that we need to clarify. So okay, that's the official definition for us. Um, but but we've got some things we need to say about this. So first of all, you'll notice here that there's a d s with an arrow. Yeah, so d s with an arrow, uh, you'll see eventually just becomes uh, the orientation vector. Um, D S without an arrow. So please keep track of capital S versus capital S with the arrow on top. I know there's a lot to keep track of here. Um, think about this, at least morally, like when we had integral F dot D R. So you'll notice how similar the notation is of uh, you've got that vector field and then a dot and then a D and then what looked like a vector, just like a D what looked like a vector. So that's the similarity to try to point out. Yeah, so yeah, this entire side is meant to be, um, this entire side is sort of like the line integral over the curve C of the vector field dot DR. It's only like it in notation is what I'm trying to get at. Um, and so just like here you used to have dr was equal to um, r prime of t dt in the same way now. So like this, we now have ds arrow is n vector ds no arrow. And then finally, this part right here, this uh, vector field f dot um, orientation n, um, that's going to be now the lowercase f that we were speaking of at the beginning. The authors of the text try to present all this stuff in multiple ways, and I do think they are trying to be helpful, but I think just the key thing to remember is that d uh, bold s turns into n vector times d unbold s, and then things will be okay. Let's look at some examples.